truly a historic day. I mean, just take a look around at um, all of us coming together, all New Yorkers coming together um, to, uh, to announce the first ever Pride Night in New York City baseball history. That is something worthy of applause. And as a lifelong Met fan, I am more than excited to make this announcement that the Mets are the ones who are leading the way in New York. And let's go Mets. Let's go Mets. And Pride Night will take place on Saturday, August 13th, a Saturday night in the summer at 7, 10 p.m., when the Mets take on and beat the San Diego Padres yeah. at City Field. Now, there have been several other Pride Nights across the country. In Chicago, both teams have it there, the Cubs and the White Sox. In California, the Dodgers, the A's, and the Giants have them. But no one is doing a Pride Night like the LGBT Network and the New York Mets. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Over 5,000 LGBT people and their friends and families will fill City Field uh, for the first ever Pride Night. Thousands of fans will wear commemorative Pride Night t-shirts, which you see some of them up here now. Um, a portion of each ticket sale will go to support the LGBT network's anti-bullying programs that we, uh, we provide throughout Long Island and New York City schools. And I'm happy to announce, this just happened yesterday, that we are going to have a pre-game festivities right outside someone else who broke down barriers, who this rotunda is named after, right outside the Jackie Robinson Rotunda in Mets Plaza. We're going to have a Pride in the Plaza pre-game show and concert. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be a night that all LGBT people, all families, all Met fans, and all New Yorkers could come down and celebrate and root on New York's best baseball team. So let me just tell a little bit about why Pride Night is important. Um, you know, people say, well, you have marriage equality, you have these other pieces of legislation, so why do you, con why do you need to continue to uh, have things like Pride Night, even though it's the first one? Um, and, you know, the New York tri-state area is home to an estimated 2 million LGBT residents and families who have long felt left out and not safe in major league ballparks and arenas. In many stadiums, ballparks, and arenas, Fans feel free to denigrate the opposing team and some of their own fans by using anti-gay language. The, the public display of these behaviors um, cause many LGBT people to stay home for fear of safety rather than to go on and cheer, cheer on their favorite team. You know, and bullying is still a major problem for our LGBT youth. Over 82% report being verbally and physically harassed in the past year. And we're going to hear from uh, two such youth from Queens and Long Island. And it's not only the school hallways where our youth experience this. They also experience it on the ball fields. So events like Pride Night and partnerships like the LGBT network has with the New York Mets are a uh, serve a critical role in letting our young people know that they are OK, bullying is not acceptable, and that perhaps they can grow up one day and live their dream of being a Major League Baseball player and be able to do so by being out as LGBT. So we say a big thank you to the Mets and to Major League Baseball. We are grateful and thankful to Major League Baseball and Billy Bean uh, for taking the lead in professional sports and including the LGBT community in its diversity priorities and initiatives. We, as a lifelong Met fan, I am proud that the New York Mets are not, uh, not only the defending National League champions, um, yeah. and we all know the Mets are going back, to, uh, Mets are not only going to be National League defending champions, uh, National League champions again this year, but they're going to be World Series champions yeah. this year. But we want to thank the Mets uh, for making sure that everyone is welcomed and celebrated at City Field on August 13th, certainly. But because of the partnership we have throughout the year, it's going to start when opening day happens on April 8th, all the way through to the last game of the World Series when we celebrate at City Field when the Mets are World Series champions. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and I have to get this in that as a lifelong Met fan, it doesn't hurt that we beat the Yankees to the punch <laughs> and that uh, the Mets once again reign as the champions of New York sports world for all. 
So thank you to the New York Mets for making sure that the LGBT community um, is included and feels safe at City Field and that we're all Met fans and that, you know, together between the LGBT network and New York Mets, we are going to put on not only the first Pride Night in New York history, but the best Pride Night across all of America. Um, <laughs> From the Miracle Mets, the 1969 world champion Mets, R. Chamsky. It is great to see. Ring. Oh, show the World, yeah, the world Series ring. There we go. Maybe another one this year. That's right. That's right. So um, yeah, I'm going to introduce our next, uh, our next speaker. And I think one important thing to point out here is that um, uh, you know, while there are other Pride Nights um, across the country, a lot of times people think these are gimmicks to sell tickets. Mm. Well, let me tell you, the Mets are defending uh, National League champions. Uh, City Field is almost sold out every game. The Mets don't need to do this to sell tickets. This is a, really a true partnership between the LGBT network um, and the Mets. And, it's, and I think that you know, we can't give enough accolades to the Mets for stepping up to the plate to make sure that all of our youth are safe and that all the anti-bullying work um, happens and, and, and increases throughout our schools. So again, once again, thank you to the New York Mets for really stepping up to the plate and making this happen. And one of the biggest Met fans I know, um, and you know, we now have a, uh, maybe we can go on a concert tour singing Meet the Mets, um, is our, uh, no, that would be bad. Uh, we won't be performing at the pregame Pride in the Plaza concert, I assure you. Uh, but let me introduce our great Congressman, Steve Israel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I I'm going to be very brief. Listen, uh, two weeks ago, I was in the Oval Office alone with the President of the United States and the Vice President of the United States. That was pretty cool. You know what's cooler? Come here, Art Shamsky. <laughs> hanging out, hanging out with Art Shamsky. And look at, the, look at this World Series ring. I mean, that's as cool as it gets. Let's give Art Shamsky another big hand for his Thank leadership. You. Thank you. I am, um, I am uh, in the Democratic leadership of the House of Representatives, but I'm really not partisan about anything other than this one thing, my beloved New York Mets. That's where I'm the most partisan. That's where I draw uh, the battle lines. For me, it's not about Republicans and Democrats. It's about Mets fans versus the rest of, uh, of baseball. One of the uh, best speeches I ever gave on the floor of the House of Representatives, you can look this up, gave a speech, stood up, said, Mr. Speaker, having the title of congressman is pretty impressive. But being the original president of the Ron Swoboda fan club in Levittown, <laughs> New York, I, I, well, had I known then what I know now, uh, I, I would have. So when David Kilmick called me and, and told me that not a single New York, not a single one of, the, of New York's professional teams uh, have an LGBT pride night, uh, within about 30 seconds, I called Jeff Wilpon. And I said, Jeff, I, I would hope that you would consider uh, having an LGBT pride night at City Field. And it, he was faster than a Noah Syndergaard fastball, uh, which for the record is about 97.1 miles an hour uh, in responding uh, and, uh, and facilitating this uh, conversation. So I was happy to play uh, my, my bench role uh, in uh, arranging for this night. Uh, it's going to be a, a magnificent night, not just for baseball, uh, but even more importantly, a magnificent night for Mets fans, for all New Yorkers, and for the diversity of our families. Thank you very much. Congratulations, New York Mets. Let's go Mets. Thank you, Steve. Um, who are youth leaders within the LGBT network, who uh, you know, who who really speak to what this night is going to support, um, and that's to supporting anti-bullying work in Long Island and New York City schools, mm -hmm. so that all of our young people can feel safe when they're sitting in their class, when they're uh, going on the school bus, when they're walking home from school. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, over 82% of LGBT youth report being verbally and physically harassed. And that is something we need to stop, and that is something that Pride Night is going to help the LGBT network be able to stop. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to bring up Angelica Alvarado and Ethan Diaz. <laughs> Hello, hi everybody. Um, my name is Angelica Alvarado, and I am an active youth member at the LGBT Network. And I used to live in Queens not so long ago. 
And of course, I am a very big fan of the FET, so Mets, I'm sorry. So it's a very big honor to be here with all of you. I'm no longer a resident a residence of Queens due to the extreme homophobia and verbally and physical abuse that I used to go through. I have I didn't feel welcome or safe at any school that I went to in Queens, and nor did any of my LGBT members. Uh, I didn't I also did not feel welcome in sports at all. And I used to always hide from that. Um, but I can say I am so excited to be here right now and to hear that the Mets are the ones who are going to be supporting us and helping us get into the sports that we want to get into and feel comfortable knowing that we can play sports just like any other person. And it doesn't matter whether we're gay, lesbian, or transgender. We're just the same as everybody else. So I really hope... <laughs> I really hope this leads to more acceptance within the Queens community and the Sports League. Thank you very much for having me speak on this very special day. Thank you. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name's Ethan Diaz. I'm 15 years old, and I live in Hempstead. Got you. All right, so my name's Ethan Diaz, and I live in Hempstead. I'm 15 years old. I've seen effects of bullying that bullying has had on LGBT youth, including myself. Up until the seventh grade, I was bullied ruthlessly. Because of this bullying and the school not taking action, I was transferred into three different schools. Every single day, I faced many forms of transphobia and homophobia, and it hurt a lot. <laughs> I was physically bullied in the hall. People would throw things at me on a daily basis and threaten to hit me and warn me about walking home from school. It became so painful and I was so scared I couldn't go back to school because I feared for my life. I couldn't concentrate in class due to the fear that I would have to see my bullies. Also, as a transgender student, I was it was very frustrating trying to play sports with the way I identify, or the gender I identify with. The Pride Night with the LGBT in the Met network and the Mets means so much to me and all the youth I know. It sends a message that we are okay, and that there is a place for us in the sports world. We cannot thank the New York Mets enough for your willingness to have Pride Night and your open support of LGBT people. Hopefully this will lead to a safer community all year round. Let's go Mets! Let's hear it again for Angelica and Ethan. I mean, they are just absolutely amazing. And now I'd like to bring up uh, Billy Bean, who's the Vice President for Social Responsibility and Inclusion in Major League Baseball, and is really pushing the, pushing the, uh, the agenda for LGBT inclusion throughout MLB. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, thank you, uh, Ethan and Angelica, for being brave enough to be here today. Um, it's a special day. It really is, because it's another perfect example of the power of baseball and how it can bring a community together. Um, and today, it's an interesting, uh, just looking around the room, I was asked to speak at uh, Malay College about a year ago. And um, from that experience, David walked up and tapped me on the shoulder. He came to watch. We were having a talk about inclusion. And um, we had never met before. And he just the minute I, I met him, I knew that this was something special. And f from the very get-go, he had a, a goal in mind. And the reason that we are all here today is because of his courage to, to push that envelope. And I can tell you that uh, when baseball had the vision to bring me back and uh, expand the conversation of inclusion and acceptance to the LGBT community, one of the first people that reached out to me was Sandy Alderson. And he did not just want to talk to me, he wanted to put me in Mets uniform, he wanted me on the field, he wanted me coaching the guys, throwing batting practice, and that happened last year. And uh, from the very beginning, uh, Sandy, Terry Collins, uh, the Wilpon family, they have embraced uh, the big picture. And with those two events, something like today happens. And it's just a real honor uh, to be a part of that, to introduce David and his team at the LGBT Network, they made an amazing example for all of us uh, to the Mets, and the Mets could not have been more excited, and it's just uh, picking up speed and momentum, and I'm really uh, grateful that you invited me to be here today, David, and everybody here in the community. It's a perfect example of something at the big picture uh, and, and the power of baseball, and I'm really, really proud to uh, be representing the commissioner's office here today. So thank you very much.
There's also more information on lgbtnetwork.org slash Pride Night for how you can get T-shirts, how you can be a Pride ambassador. We have Pride ambassadors who are volunteers who are spreading the word and bringing people to Pride Night throughout the tri-state area. We actually just had a, an ambassador sign up from Washington, D.C. So this really is going national. Um, not the Washington Nationals. We're going to beat them. But this is going <laughs> nationwide, I should say. And um, and Mets fans are going to come back together on Saturday, August 13th. LGBT, straight, allied, families, co-workers, uh, and friends. And we're all going to celebrate Pride Night as it should be celebrated, as one big happy family and as all Mets fans. Let's go Mets. <laughs> Do you feel this is um, maybe a wake-up call for other teams to do these kinds of events here in here in New York, um, kind of a turning point? No, absolutely not. This is not about what – it's not a, a race. It's uh, the, the, re the good relationship that I have with the Mets, the way they reached out to me, um, and then David reaching out. It was just uh, – this is – this is how life goes. It was just uh, a, a lot of good stuff going on today. I think when you lead by example, things, uh, you know, it might become interesting to other clubs, but, you know, the Yankees have had great uh, response to my work. I've, I've gone and talked to their baseball team. I've, I've talked to their minor leaguers. Um, it's a, t it's a timing thing, and I think the Mets uh, really, really wanted to embrace their community. And uh, to me, it's it's all about you know something good happening with one club. If the other clubs want to follow suit, um, which I'm sure they will, all in time. Um, but like we said, you know, the goal is someday that we don't have to talk about special nights like this. That everybody feels welcome everywhere. And uh, but for the first one to happen, you know, New York is such a great, amazing city. I live here. Um, I'm just super excited. It's going to be a really fun energy, just like the energy in this room. You see people excited because it feels overdue, which is, to me, that's a victory in itself. You know, that we have the chance to see two young examples of what is actually happening in the world today. And this is not about special interests or favoritism. This is about making us all a little bit closer, a little bit safer, and bringing a community a little bit closer together. How important is this? I think it's vital because it's a message that goes out, and it really it shows the power of baseball. Um, baseball, we just have a, a, a special way about, you know, it started with Jackie Robinson 70 years ago in 1947, um, and that message continues. And, you know, we, we are, the world is changing, and, and young uh, people are learning more and more about themselves at younger ages. And, you know, in this age of social media, bullying is a massive problem, and it's a massive problem for everybody. And if, if only the visibility of the message and the importance um, by this night makes other people talk to each other about, you know, or, or parents talk to their children, then it's a, it's a win. That's what I mean about the, the big picture. It's not just about a baseball game, but it, uh, it's certainly great that baseball is helping make this happen. So a portion of the proceeds from the tickets are going to this anti-bullying program that the network does. Uh, what does that mean to you? Um, that means a, a lot more than I thought it would, honestly, because when I heard about this, uh, it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, I get to talk at an event, you know, it's something they told me to do. But now I'm kind of here, and I'm hearing more about what it's going to do for us, and it's kind of interesting me a lot more than it did. Um, I feel like this is going to be a very great thing in the nation in general because LGBT community, the LGBT community, is not always accepted to people. But now that it is being welcomed into sports, everyone watches sports. Um, I feel like it's going to be a lot more of a, uh, it's going to be in their heads more. That the idea that LGBT people who are LGBT are human too. They are accepted. Why was it important for you to be here today? Um, honestly, I felt that I went through a lot involving sports and the fact that I wasn't able to play because of how I identified. And I want to be able to share my story and explain to people that this did happen to me. This is a possibility that it will happen to other people, but it is getting better. It's not going to always be like this. So you were denied the ability to play with a certain team, a baseball team? Um, it was volleyball. Uh, it was actually a few sports, but the main one that really messed me up was volleyball because that was when I kind of stopped playing sports in general. Um, I was just, it wasn't even a specific sport or a team. It was just I wanted to play sports on the team I, on the male teams that I identified with, and they said no to me. 
So, and you actually had to move, transfer from school to school yes. a couple of times. Um, I went to elementary school up until throughout up until fifth grade. I was I was bullied throughout the whole time, but uh, after that, I was switched to a private school for middle school, and then um, I stayed there for a year and a half, and that didn't really work out. So I went to a Brennan. I, I went to a Bosey's, which I'm in now, which is named Brennan, in West Babylon. What kind of a do people realize what a problem bullying is? No, I I mean, it, it's definitely more of an idea, like they know what's going on more now, but it's not taken care of as much as I feel I would like it to be, seeing as how much I've gone through with the bullying. Um, I feel like there's a lot more we could be doing, a lot more kids who could be speaking up about it because they don't realize that there are ways to fix it, but they're scared. So you transferred three times, three yes. different schools. Yes. Um, mi- middle, elementary school I switched. Well, for middle school I switched, and then for high school I switched. And were denied being on some sports teams. Yes, many times. Um, right now I don't play sports as, on a team. I play with my friends, and that's it. But uh, I would like to play sports on a team again sometime soon. And because of this, I think I'll be able to. Are you hoping that... Um, LGBT youth that come to this game are going to feel more welcome and possibly, you know, if they want to be a Major League Baseball player, they're going to pursue that. I feel like a lot of kids are going to cry when they realize what's going on because of how amazing this is. It's a great opportunity, a great thing that's going on. Um, I'm not going to be able to make it personally to the game, but I'm going to definitely watch it and I'm going to be very happy to see what's going on. It's going to be a good message for yeah, for you? Definitely. Uh, I know it's going to be a good message. I know kids are going to have a lot more hope for themselves, be a lot more open to going out there. Maybe not right away, but it will happen eventually. Okay.